addition to the emotional effects, music can enhance the suspension of disbelief by helping the world of the game to feel culturally authentic. Games take place in all sorts of locales, some contemporary, some historical, some completely imaginary. The Assassin's Creed Liberation game from Ubisoft took place in 18th century New Orleans, so I composed a score that reflected the French Baroque musical style that would have been prevalent at that time. So let's watch the characters dance a little in-game minuet. Senorita. Why, I do believe the minuet is the next dance, Senor Vasquez. Si, si. When music is used in such a way that it seems to be a part of the living environment, it's called diegetic music. But this isn't the only way in which a musical score can increase the cultural authenticity of the game. In the Da Vinci Code game from 2K Games, a lot of the action took place in various religious sites. So I composed a score that was meant to reflect strong religious overtones. That being said, the music didn't seem to be actually occurring in the in-game location. It was non-diegetic, but it was strongly influenced by the culture of the surroundings. So let's take a look at that. seems to have occurred right around midnight. In the same vein, most fantasy realms can trace influences that are cultural to real life cultures for both the past and the present, and these can be woven into the musical score for a fantasy based game. When I composed the music for the Legend of the Guardians game from WB Games, I infused some of it with a few Asian influences in order to give it a sense of tradition. Upon arrival at the Glaucian Brotherhood retreat, Shard's hopes were dashed to discover what he sought was not to be found there. Knowledge of these flicks was lost when Perok fell. But as Shard turned, ready to depart the retreat, the monk took pause, then continued. There is, however, an elderly hermit named Cormac, who dwells in some old ruins not far from here. He once studied at Perok and might be convinced to help you.